The latest spacesuit for NASA astronauts has been revealed. The new designs have been prepared for the Artemis 3 mission to return astronauts to the moon later this decade. Joining me live is Glenn Nagel from NASA and the CSIRO's Deep Space Communication Complex in Canberra. Thanks very much for your time. So, new suit, what is new? So the new suits are a far cry from what was used in the Apollo days. Axiom Space was given a $228 million contract to be able to just improve the way the astronauts can live and work when they're out in space and on the surface of the moon for Artemis 3 in 2025. So the new suits will have greater flexibility, much better viewing scope for the astronauts to see the landscape around them, and particularly much easier use of their hands. One of the things the Apollo astronauts had a big problem with, with their large space suited gloved hands, was actually just opening and closing their hands to be able to pick up rock samples or to use equipment. So greater flexibility in that system. So if an everyday Australian, if I popped down and chucked on the modern day suit, would I sort of be able to move around and function straight away or do I need six weeks or six months to move around in it? How, how complicated are they? No, actually, these are much easier to get into and out of and to actually use. So the old Apollo suits were tailor-made to each and every astronaut. You had to put them on a section at a time, put the pants on, put the top on, put the arms, the gloves, the helmet, all these individual pieces. But for the new suits, they actually just have a backdoor entry. So you just simply open the hatch on the back of the suits. You climb on in. It's literally slip on in. They're designed for up to 90% of body types to be able to use. And it's literally just close the hatch and you can start walking around and moving around. They're also much lighter suits than we used in Apollo here on Earth. The Apollo suits weigh around about 120 kilograms each here on our planet's gravity. On the moon, only about one-sixth of that, of course. But on the moon, you want something that's easy, flexible to move in, to keep the astronauts cool, keep them mobile. Right, so the old suits, you just couldn't get in them on Earth and move around at all at 120 keg, but they were OK on the moon at 20, but still pretty sort of... Stiff, did, how did they train in them? Was it sort of zero gravity areas or low gravity just to train in those old suits? Yeah, so the only way to actually train to actually walk on the moon is to simulate that lack of gravity on the moon. It's about one sixth of the environment. So quite often astronauts are training in large water tanks with very, very clear filtered water to not obscure your view. And they're weighted, they weight the suits in such a way so the astronauts neither float nor sink. So reducing their overall body weight by one six so that we don't do that again for the Apollo astronauts, um, for the Artemis missions, of course. And another way to train them is in weightlessness training aircraft. So aircraft doing high parabolic arcing flights. So almost like going over a, a big roller coaster, but you're doing these big loops for about 30 seconds, giving you that microgravity experience. So all these different okay. techniques go into the ways to train the astronauts. Once you're out there walking around, I've got a couple of silly questions for you now. Um, I'm sure the suits are designed pretty well, but let's say you somehow get a little piercing, a hole in there. Do you sort of have to scramble back onto the craft? Does your oxygen mix sort of still stay OK? Does your oxygen, you know, straight into your mouth so you're all right? What, what happens if you get a little hole in there? Yeah, so there's quite a number of things you have to do to create a spacesuit to make it suitable for a human being. It literally has to be a one-person spacecraft. So it's not a single layer. It's usually 25 to 30 individual layers, including an interior bladder, which is there designed to keep positive pressure on the human body and also to provide that oxygen feed through their helmet. So you would have to actually break the helmet. And they're designed with literally a bulletproof material that can withstand micrometeoroid impacts or the astronauts falling over and hitting their face plate on a rock. So we've made sure that we can protect those astronauts. There's also layers to protect from radiation, from the extreme changes in temperature you'll experience on the moon. And the outer material that you see in the, the suit that Axiom's designed that was on display today is a black suit. They will, in fact, be white, just like the original Apollo suits, mainly for thermal reasons. But they're actually a material that's a woven fiberglass. So they're extremely strong and very hard right. to tear. So you'll be okay. If you okay. jump in one, you'll be fine on the moon. <laughs> I've got an even stupider question. I sort of can't believe I'm asking this, but if you took off your, the, the, I understand it's bulletproof. If you just pop that off either on the moon or in the middle of space, would your head pop? Would it freeze instantly? What would happen? 
So funny, I was just looking at that actually this morning. So your face won't explode, which is quite often what they show in the movies. It's nice and spectacular for you know Arnold Schwarzenegger to have that happen to him. But actually what would really happen is suddenly, first thing you want to do is actually let all the air just release from your lungs because all that air pressure wants to get out you know, to the vacuum. So going from high pressure to the low pressure of space. And then, so your blood vessels would also start to puff up and your skin would start to swell up and expand. So you'd last about 15 seconds before you passed out from asphyxia, uh, but also at the same time, because of the extreme cold in that environment, mm. your body would also freeze. So all the water would crystallize. So you would pass out very, very quickly and you wouldn't notice any pain. So, but my recommendation is to everybody, never take your space suit off. I'm not sure I'm making it past the first level of space school, but I like your faith, Glenn. I appreciate your serious answers and humouring me as well. Thank you. Thank you.